module 10b we're getting into lewis structures so we're going to start drawing these lewis structures lewis structures is just a 2d representation of how the molecules are actually connected you need to know these rules um do i have the rules memorized well yeah i guess technically i do really i do it more by just knowing the process and so the more practice you do the more compounds you draw out the easier this will be the easier this process will be and the easier you'll have on doing Lewis structures in general. So please practice this a lot. Steps for drawing Lewis structures. The first thing you wanna do is sum your valence electrons from all atoms, taking into account any positive or negative charge. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say I have HCl. Hydrogen has one valence electron. Chlorine, seven valence electrons. Overall, this has eight valence electrons. What if I had nitrate, NO3 minus, nitrogen, five valence electrons. I have three oxygens. Each oxygen has six valence electrons. Overall, this is 23 valence electrons, but I have a negative charge here. I'm going to add one more electron to give me 24 valence electrons. That negative charge gets added. We have an extra electron, we add it. NH4 plus, ammonium, nitrogen, five valence electrons, four hydrogens, four times one valence electron, overall nine valence electrons, but I have a plus charge here. Plus means I lost an electron, so minus one valence electron gives me overall eight valence electrons. That's what I mean by taking into account positive or negative charges. Determine which atoms are connected. Usually your central atom is listed first, not always, but usually. In some cases, the formula describes the order in which the atoms are bonded. In oxyacids, oxyacid is when you have hydrogens attached to oxygens, the oxygens are attached to your central atom. Oxyacids are things like H2SO4, HNO3, H3PO4. These are all oxyacids, an acid with an oxygen in it. In oxyacids, the hydrogens are attached to the oxygens, the oxygen atoms are attached to the central atom. The less electronegative atom or more electropositive is usually your central atom. You're gonna distribute all valence electrons in this order. First, connect the atoms. One line represents two electrons. Second, complete your octet on your outer atoms. Third, put any leftover electrons on your central atom. Four, check to see if the central atom has an octet. If it does not, use multiple bonds. There are exceptions, aluminum chloride, for example, sulfuric acid, we're gonna learn about the exceptions in a minute. Assign and minimize your formal charges and draw important resonance structures. So let's draw Lewis structures for the following molecules or ions. We've got PCL5. Phosphorus has five valence electrons. I have five chlorines. Each chlorine has seven valence electrons. Overall, this gives me 40 valence electrons. Put the phosphorus in the center. One, it's the least electronegative. We don't know why yet, but trust me, but it's also listed first. And again, listed first usually means that it's a central atom. Connect all your atoms. We just kind of equally space them around. Count up how many electrons you've used so far. Two, four, six, eight, ten. I've used ten electrons out of my 40. Now I'm going to go ahead and add, I'm going to um, complete octets on my outer atoms. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two. 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, and 40. Now my chlorines all have an octet. They all have eight electrons around them, and they are happy. Phosphorus has more than an octet, but phosphorus is allowed to have more than an octet. It's one of our exceptions. We'll figure out why soon. But this is the Lewis structure for PCL5. How about SF4? Sulfur. Six valence electrons, 
four fluorines, four times seven valence electrons. Overall, 34 valence electrons. Two, four, six, eight. Everything is connected. I've used up eight electrons so far. Now I'm going to complete the octets on my outer atoms. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. I've used up 32 electrons, but I have 34. Third, put any leftover electrons on your central atom. 34. That is the Lewis structure for SF4. And XEF4. Xe, xenon, eight valence electrons. We tell you noble gases don't want to do anything, and that's true to a point. Xenon is so big it doesn't really care, and it will bond with things. Four fluorines, four times seven valence electrons. Overall, 36 valence electrons. Xe in the center. Two, four, six, eight. They're all connected. Now fill in your octets on the outer atoms. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. I've used 32, but I've got 36. I'm going to put my extra leftover electrons on my central atom. 34 and 36. Okay, H2SO4 and SO2. I've got two hydrogens, so two times one valence electron, one sulfur, one times six valence electrons, and four oxygen, four times six valence electrons. Overall, 32 valence electrons. Sulfuric acid is an oxy acid, meaning I've got sulfur in the center, connected to oxygens, And those oxygens are where the hydrogens are connected. So far I've used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 electrons. I need to complete my octets in my outer atoms. Hydrogen can only have two electrons, but oxygen wants an octet. So I've used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, and 32. Next, I see if my central atom, atom has an octet, and it does not, or it, well, it, okay, let me correct that. It technically does have an octet, but um, we're going to learn formal charge in another module, and we're going to see that sulfur is actually quite unhappy, even though it has an octet. We're going to learn how to minimize formal charge. So you don't know why yet, but trust me when I say that, that was too big of an eraser, um, that we're going to take two electrons from each oxygen and we're going to form a double bond to the sulfur. Again, that's because of formal charge. We will get there soon, I promise. And SO2 has one sulfur, one times six valence electrons, two oxygens, two times six valence electrons, 18 valence electrons, Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, and eighteen. It does not have its octet yet, so I'm going to form a double bond. And we're going to learn by formal charge that it's actually going to form two double bonds. And that's actually going to be the structure of SO2. And you don't quite know why yet. I promise it's coming. But what we do notice here is that sulfur has more than an octet. And on this example, phosphorus had more than an octet. Here, sulfur has more than an octet. Here, xenon has more than an octet. They're all gaining more than an octet. So there are exceptions to the octet rule that you are responsible for. Atoms that routinely have less than an octet. Beryllium, boron, aluminum. Beryllium, and well, in hydrogen. Hydrogen, it's hydrogen octet is two electrons total. Beryllium wants four. Boron and aluminum want six. 
They just do. It makes them happy. That's their complete octet. Aluminum wants to form three bonds. Boron wants to form three bonds. Beryllium wants to form two bonds. Hydrogen wants to form one bond. So remember, this means four electrons, which is two bonds. Six electrons, which is three bonds. Two electrons, so one bond. Molecules with an odd number of electrons. They can't obey the octet rule if they have an odd number of electrons. These are extremely reactive. They are called free radicals or radicals, and they have unpaired electrons, and they do crazy chemistry because they don't like being unpaired. Third row elements and below. So below phosphorus, phosphorus and below, sulfur and below, chlorine and below can have more than an octet because they have empty d orbitals in their valence shell. Remember when we fill across the periodic table? We've got groups one and two, your transition metals, and then your p block. Got. Okay. Draw this correctly. Got one more block up here. We've got your n equals one block. Oops. Sorry. N equals two. These are not drawn to scale. N equals three. N equals four. N equals five. I really need a pair table to do this. So n equals one, two, three, four. This is my n equals four. 4s, 4p, this is my 3ds, this is my 3s's, this is my 3p's. These guys have empty 3d orbitals. They don't put electrons there, but they can. Phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine have empty 3d orbitals. They're hanging out there and they can hold electrons if you need them to. These guys have empty 4Ds. These have empty 5Ds. So third row elements have empty 3D orbitals in their valence shell. Third row elements and below are large enough to accommodate more than four bonds, which is what we saw in the examples we just did.